Well, welcome to Two Eight Four Media's Just for the Record. I am your host Kamal Haynes, and today joining me in studio is District Four candidate Paul On the Ball Hewlett, who will be contesting under the Progressive Virgin Islands Movement Party in the April twenty fourth general election. We will get to the reasons behind Hewlett's political interests and how he intends to address some of the existing topical issues in the British Virgin Islands when we return. to enjoy life like so many ways to count on popular Rashford made it Manchester United have come from behind to lead at home or on the go watch CCT live download our app and carry your favorite TV shows news or live sports anywhere you go visit cctbvi.com forward slash live select your package and tune in we now return with more Just For The Record. Well, welcome back. We're here on Just For The Record with Paul On The Ball Hewlett, who, is, or who will be contesting as a District 4 candidate under the Progressive Virgin Islands Movement Party in the April 24th general election. Well, welcome, Mr. Hewlett. Oh, welcome. Thank you, Kamal. Great for having, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Uh, thank you for joining us as well. Well, firstly, I want to get straight to the questions. Sure. Who is Paul On The Ball Hewlett? Well, Paul Nabal Hewlett is uh, basically a guy that's I've been here pretty much all my life. Uh, my sister was born here, grew up in the 4th District, which is low estate, uh, with my family. Um, I guess when I was 18, went away to study law for a few years, and then decided it wasn't really my thing, didn't enjoy it, was always involved in sports, um, eventually ended up competing for the Virgin Islands internationally. Uh, qualified to go to the, 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 the 1987 uh, World Championships. I mm. uh, was 18th there, 5th at the Pan American Games. And basically after that I came back home and since then I've really very much been involved in, in coaching and running my own business, being my own boss, really. I've always been a people's, a person's, a people's person, mm. you know, and just, just that, that, that's, that's the bottom line for who I am, to be honest. Okay. So walk me through your academic training and also your professional career. Right. Well, um, I started school here at the BVI primary school in the, in the early 60s. Uh, and then I, my, my father sent me away to school in Antigua, where I did secondary school there at a private school called St. Joe's Academy, which actually quite a few persons from, from here have actually also attended. Um, when I got to fourth form, my parents brought me back home and I did my last two years. I repeated fourth and then I did fifth form at the BVI High School. After completing that, I then went back overseas to the UK to do my law degree, as I mentioned earlier. I did two years of that and then decided I, I, I didn't want to do that. And at the same time, I was training full time as, a, as an athlete. And so I kind of gravitated to that. And um, Again, I've re really repeated the rest, but from there I went on to, to uh, you know, compete at the World Championships, the Pan American Games, the Caribbean and Central American Championships, you know, all that sort of stuff, and um, started running my own business, and I've been working for myself for pretty much most of my life. Mm -hmm. And in terms of your, your, you say you've been working more uh, for yourself uh, most of your life as a, as a professional, give us a little bit more insight for those persons who don't know what you specialize in professionally. Right. I've really been into, I'm a people's person, I've really been into sales. Anything that's basically in the uh, sales rep, I'm into selling basic household stuff. But our, our business that, I, that, that I've done over the years, um, some of you might have heard of a, a, a company called Amway. Um, it really, what it is all about is, is selling people. It's teaching people to love people and to care about people. And um, the only way you, are, you can actually be in, successful in that business, and I actually eventually held the, the largest business in the Eastern Caribbean. I'm, I'm also in 10 countries around the world. Uh, I've, so I've been doing that business for nearly 30 years. And so the only way you can be successful in that is by being able to relate to people 
and genuinely love people. Mm. Okay, my next question is, why do you want to be a political representative? Well, uh, I've always been involved in politics at different levels. Eh? So, by nature, I'm a people's person. By nature, I love people. And let me, let me take you to this point. This is what I, 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 I say to people when they ask me this. So, in 2020, there was a pandemic. We all were aware of that. And during that period, I had a lot of time to think. Now, prior to that, prior to the, the previous three elections, I had been approached by different people to, to, be, a, to be a politician, to, to be a representative. And I turned it down because I just didn't think at that time that I wanted to, that sort of exposure. I had some experiences before because I had been involved in politics elsewhere and had some bad experiences. I've had death threats. And so my family didn't want me to go there again. But after the pandemic, in fact, during the pandemic, I had a lot of time to think and I said to myself, you know what? I was not happy with how the government had dealt with the, the small businessmen. I didn't think they had handled the pandemic at, at, at its best. And I just felt at that point, something in my mind basically said, Paul, you need to get involved in politics. That was in 2020. In 2021, and it, it, this is quite fascinating, on the 9th of the 6th, 2021, how do I know? Because I write a diary. I've always done so. So I, I, I timeline myself. I actually met with a, a gentleman who had been very involved in politics and told him my thoughts about being political um, at, back home. And he said, yes, we'll speak to a, a, a present minister who two days later on the 11th I spoke to and who said, listen, that's a great idea. Come and work with us. So they added me to their chat room. And I've basically been in touch and been touching base and speaking to politicians ever since. So there has been a progression. This is not something I just suddenly got up and decided I just want to do. It's something that I've thought about for a long time. I, I'm, I'm quite meticulous when it comes to making decisions. I think them through and I, I have to be very sure that's what I want to do because once I've committed myself to doing it, as I have with my business, I stick with it. And, but, but if I'm involved in something and I'm not happy, I don't stick around, mm. right? But that's why I make sure it's something that I want to do, that I'm passionate about. Now, in the BVI here, people know me for sports. I've done radio and television for most of my life. I've, I coach. I've coached multiple athletes that have broken national records, regional records, and what have you. All right. But for me, I just had to make that decision that this is what I want to do. And once I made that decision, there was no looking back. I knew within my heart I'd made the right decision. Ironically, after that, all sort of stuff happened. And I don't need to tell the general public because they know what happened next, right? And that confirmed to me that I had made the right decision. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't four weeks ago or six weeks ago, somebody approached me and asked me. I went to them. I said, listen, I'm ready. This is it. I want to do this. Let's rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ultimately it was your decision. It was 100% my decision. Okay, and in terms of, uh, so based on what you would have told me so far, what would you say your purpose in life is? My purpose in life is to, is to help people. My purpose in life is to, is to ensure that, 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 that well, let's, let's put it this way, um, human rights. That's my, that's, that, that is my purpose in life, to ensure that people like you and I are getting the right pay uh, and, and able to, to achieve the goals that you want to achieve. That is, that's what I've always felt my purpose in life is to help other people. And everything that I've done in life has always been circulated around helping other people. In fact, my own family have complained many times that I spend more time with others than I do with them, you know. And so that has always been, it's, I, I think it's in my DNA mm -hmm. that I've always just wanted to be out there assisting other people, doing things for other people and helping them to get the way they want to get to. So that takes me to the point that I always knew I would do well in politics. Because once I'm out there working with people, and, and in fact, for many years, people have always, have always said to me, you ever thought about getting involved in politics? I, I, or people that don't know me say, are you a politician? I said, no, it's just what I'm like. I'll go to a supermarket and the person um, that's coming behind me, I'll, I'll pay for their groceries. Right? I, when I meet guys out on, on, out on the block, I, I happily give them a dollar. If I, listen, if, we, if I saw you said to me, Paul, give me a dollar. I don't prejudge you. I don't say well, what you're going to do with a dollar. I just make the decision if I'm going to give you the dollar and I give you the dollar and I walk away. And that's it. And that has been the way I've dealt with life all my life. Okay. 
Uh, so my next question, um, a common belief among the average person is that most politicians are liars or thieves. What is your view on that statement? <laughs> I love that comment. I really love it because I was talking to a young man last night, funnily enough. And um, when we initially started talking, understandably, he wanted to get the feel of who I was and how I thought and what I wanted, why was I involved in politics. And I said to him, listen, we have a challenge right now that because of what has transpired with us from the hurricane to the commission of inquiry to the unfortunate situation with, with Mr. Foy, what has happened is that we have what I call a bandwagon appearance. In my humble opinion, a lot of people who probably would not have gotten involved in politics have jumped on the bandwagon. And that's what we're seeing. I'm not 100% convinced a lot of these people are actually concerned about the people. This is the point that you're making there, right? And so, therefore, as I look around at, 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 at this big fiesta that's just, just about to happen, I'm, I just know you're going to see a lot of them just fall to the wayside. And after the elections, you won't see them anymore. They won't be in the limelight. I've always been involved. I've always been involved on, on the athletics track, right? I've always been involved with education at some level, helping some teaching, doing stuff. That's just my nature. And so therefore, the concept of politicians and, and, or the prospective politicians, uh, it is very understandable for the average person to have that feeling because of the, 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 the mannerisms and also because of the fact that when many of when politicians get into the, into the game, suddenly they become unapproachable. You can't reach them anymore. You, you, you can't touch them. You can't speak to them. You can't even call them on the phone. Right? They only come to you when they need something from you. And, and obviously right now, they need something from the general public. Right? So I'm just here to say that my focus is not on before the elections. My focus is on after the election. I just understand, as everyone understands, that you've got to put in the work before. But I am very much concerned with what happens after the election. Okay. Um, and, and why should people elect you? Well, like I said before, it's just I'm, 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 I'm a, not just a nice person, but I'm a person who will do what the people want. I am really focused on assisting individuals in what they need. It's not what we want. It's about human rights, what people need. I've always been able to sit down and have a, have a helping hand. I have an office right in town. I own a building in town. That office is going to be transformed into my office where people can walk in and out every single day. I want to ensure that every day I can be approachable, I can be reached. Now, there are going to be days when there's cabinet, different things going on, I understand that. But generally speaking, I want to ensure that within my four years of tenure, that I can always be reached by the general populace. Okay. And if, if elected, what would be your preferred choice of focus and why? Well, let, let me say this first of all, because I was asked this before and then somebody branded me as in the Ministry of Education. Um, and, 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 and that's okay, because as I've said to you, my love is in education and sports. I taught for, for, for seven plus years um, at, at higher education in secondary school. And I was the games master at at my school, and I've been involved in that level. But for me, wherever Ronnie Skelton wants to put me, I can handle and I can make things happen. Obviously, I would love to be involved in my strongest points, but I am capable enough to do anything and go anywhere that the Honorable Skelton, my leader, wants me to go. Mm -hmm. right? So my preference, yes, absolutely. My strength, where my passion is, obviously everybody knows me, you, first thing you said was Paul on the ball. That came from sports, all right? But a lot of people aren't aware that I, I'm, I'm, I was always very academic and I am very versatile. So I can, I can literally work in any department. Mm. The, only, the only department I probably wouldn't want to work in is probably finance. Because mm. I think that somebody should be like a chartered accountant or something like that if they're in, because that's about the people's money. Mm. And so that's, to me, there has to be somebody who is very strong in that area. Mm -hmm. Well, more so, um, just to mm. go back to that particular question as well, mm. not specific to ministry, but in terms of some of the issues in the, in the, in the BVI presently, mm -hmm. if you was to be elected, what are some of the areas you intend on tackling head on?
we'll be right back with more just for the record after this short break yo everything good dad bye this thing got me one way daddy what you mean ever since i hook up with this thing can't eat i can't sleep this is the first thing i touch it when i reach home what are you really hey this thing like you know dad this thing got me staying home keeping out that trouble me wow what's your name is she i talk about my ccd life don't worry about missing your favorite series sports news and local programming Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I huff. I watch him ball. I been watching football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. We now return with more just for the record. Not specific to ministry, but in terms of some of the issues in the, in the, in the BVA presently. Mm -hmm. If you was to be elected, what are some of the areas you intend on tackling head on? Right. So this is a question that I always am very wary of because for the listening audience, what, they, what the people always say is that people promise, promise, promise what they're going to do, but when they get in, they do the opposite. And we've seen that, you've seen that time and time again. So I'm going to say this very tentatively. For me, I'm going to say some of the basic obvious things. If you look at the A.O. Shirley grounds, the Warwin Brule grounds, which are the two sports stadiums here, I would love to see solar lighting on those. If you know the cost to put on those lights for an hour, you'd be afraid to turn them on. Right? And who pays for that? The general public. Right? If you look through the whole, the whole territory, Look at the amount of times you've driven past a basketball court and seen the lights left on after the children finished playing. If we had solar lighting in all these different facilities, then we wouldn't have to panic about energy being used that you and I have to pay for. So that is one of the things that I'm passionate about. Outside, outside of that, obviously, the sporting facilities need to be fixed. Um, if I'm looking at the fourth district in particular, if I'm being, gonna be a little, a little selfish about my people, you know, the, the you know, town needs to be better beautified. If you're a tourist and you landed here off of one of the ships into town, what would be your first impression when you look to your left, my left, your right, and you saw all the bush, all the derelict cars and all the things over there that stacked up? These are things that have to be fixed up, have to be beautified. I think there should be bike lanes. I think I, yesterday I was driving on, on, I was riding on the shuttle, you know, the local shuttle that we just started, that's just new now. And I saw a tourist trip and fall walking on our walkways. Three other people that were on the shuttle said, oh, we see that all the time. And that's because our roads need to be repaved correctly so that, they, so that it can be smooth. At the same time, we were just driving past the sewage area, which was right in town. And another person on the shuttle said, Paul Nabal, can you explain to me why you all put a sewage right in town and it smells so bad? So that sewage area needs to be capped off, needs to be fixed properly. You know, if I can smell it and you can smell it, I'm sure we both smelled it, it means the tourists can smell it. So there's some basic things. My, the point I'm making to you is that there's some basic things that need to be addressed in Rotan and in the territory. Right? I don't want to sit on here and say I'm going to go through all those things and I'm promising the people I'm going to do that. That's not how it works. But there's some basic things like what I mentioned of, that are important that's going to save you and I money and put money back into our pockets. Right? The last thing I just touch on here, because I don't want to go on too much, too much stuff, because I don't want to start promising, is the small businessman. We have to find a way right, of generating money back in the hands of the small businessman. And it doesn't work by giving them little handouts. That's not how it works. We have to create um, work in a way that the small businessman begins to generate an income. When the small businessman is making money, Everybody makes money. 
everybody is happy, right? The general guy in the street can now go out there and buy more stuff because there's more work going on. And, they, and it can be something um, like extending the, the, the airport, building more hotels around the territory, right? So rather than just ships coming in for a day, now they may come in on the ship, but they come off the ship and they shuttle to the airport and they spend a week here. Now they're going to be spending real money in the territory. So the, the whole territory benefits from it. And I don't even want to go into sports tourism. I held a, 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 a game called the Buster Cup here in 2003. A lot of people don't even know I'm the one that, 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 that held that, that cricket match. And the taxi men will tell you they were off of their feet. I charged the vendors $600 per vendor to come into the grounds that day. They complained bitterly. Someone said they weren't going to come and it's too, too much and what have you. After the first day, every single vendor had sold out plus and made their money back. We had 5,000 people per day at the A.O. Shirley grounds and we made at the gate, at the gate over $150,000. Mm -hmm. And, and it, is, it is I as the president. And I, let, let me just say this because the executive, some of them aren't even around now. When I put the whole thing together, my executive said that it can't work my executive told me it can't work and they stood down. They said, so they tried to pressure me not to have it. I still stood because I knew it would work. I believed that it would work. I created a new executive, rightly or wrongly. That's what I did, right? My original executive, when they saw, because I had, we had planes flying from the north to the south of the Caribbean, promoting this event. Cable and wireless restraint, they were then, right? Tourist board. All the big guns, wrote on wholesale, they all jumped on board. Everybody saw the vision, except for my executive. I didn't back down. Eventually, when my executive realized what was going on, they all rushed back in. Because we, there were free t-shirts, there was everything. It was, it was like an election, okay? Mm -hmm. It was just excitement. And the people loved it. And the territory made money. The hotels couldn't hold everyone. And it was a great experience. And that's what I'm talking about. We're talking about bringing money back into the economy. There has to be things that are, that are physically happening. For example, horse racing, right? I don't know if you're aware, but this is the first Christmas that I'm aware of, that on Boxing Day, we didn't have horse racing. That is a travesty. There is no way. And I know we talk about what is the, you know, the, the, the main sport in the BVI, but well, let me tell you something, right? It's not cricket, it's not soccer, it's not volleyball, it's not softball. It is horse racing. It is horse racing. The others run a close second, but the people here love horse racing. And when you shut down that horse track, you're telling the young people to turn to crime. You're telling young people that you don't care, right? You have no concern for them and they can do what they want. And you know what young people do? Exactly that. They do what they want. Because if we're not showing interest in them, they do their own thing. And there were thousands of people on that day who had nothing to do. Well, in my humble opinion, that should never, ever happen again mm -hmm. okay i mean that's question with that being said mm. you know should you be elected i know you as you said you're a very intentional person so i'm sure this have to this have had to be a, a thought in your mind what would your first few months in office look like well really and truly i'm not a again like i said i'm not a russia i want to get my my main office in town settled get that put away I want to do some of the basic things. Begin to sit down with this, the main stakeholders, have lots of meetings, and find out what really, what really needs to happen. I want to look at the, the, the educational system. I'm very keen, as quickly as I can, to have someone, and I already have the people in mind, I've already touched base with them, I've already spoken to them, right, about reviewing the educational system here. It needs revamping. So I want that person to come in here as soon as they can and to begin to sit down and have a look at our educational system. All right. So from that point of view and from there, I can begin working along with the other stakeholders in education. We can begin to revert that because one of the things that one of my big beefs is that you can't have uh, a bunch of students and handpick who is going to take uh, CXC exams. Why doesn't every single child have the opportunity to take it? Oh, well, Mr. Hewlett, well, some of them don't are academically sound. 
Well, then that's because we haven't put in the work to make them academically sound, and we're assuming that they're gonna have, they must take English, maths, and science. There are other subjects that they can take, but everybody must have the opportunity. You don't want to throw them into us. Uh, you know, a form, you know, 8-8 eight, eight or 12-8 on the side and just let them sit there. So that's sort of one side. And on the other side of it, I really want to begin to look at um, the sporting facilities. They need a total overhaul, right? And um, really begin to get those things happening. And, and, and the one thing that has not been, that every single politician has promised you and they've never done, is take a serious look at sports, sports tourism and sports in the Virgin Islands because it is not acceptable for you to show up after a Crift of Games because we just won a bunch of medals, more than Barbados, right? The only people that are beating us is Trinidad, we tie with the Bahamas and Jamaica. You know, don't mention Jamaicans because they're up there. And then you want to be in the photo up when you haven't been involved for the last 11 months to that build up. There are coaches there, listen, I've been there for the last three years, day in, day out. There are coaches that are there who are taking money out of their pocket to help to facilitate the athletes, to buy them shoes, giving them lunch, different things. These are the same people who are the ones who are ensuring that these athletes are winning these medals. But we're not supporting them. So that is, that, that is just a base. I mean, there are lots of other avenues, but that I'm just giving you, you know, a, to respond to your question, just the base. Okay. And, and what are your professional plans if you are not elected? Well, I mean, I, I have always worked for myself. I will never stop. I'll continue doing what I do. I've always helped people where I can. I, I, you know, I, I, I run a second company now, which is a, a, a Bailey firm. And um, I'm, I'm very passionate about the parking in town. And uh, I think that's something that needs to be addressed. I've, I've spoken to the government already about this. I'd like to see um, parking meters be put up, right? I'd like to see people that own businesses being given passes so they can park in specific areas during the day so their parking areas aren't blocked, all right? So I want to see that done. And then let's say you are just coming to town, you want to shop, and there's lots of parking areas in town, but you don't want to stop there because you're going to get a ticket. Now you know you can spend 30 minutes or 45 minutes based on the meter, you put a couple pennies in there, I don't know, 50 cents a dollar, whatever it is, and now you, you can spend 30, 40 minutes running to where you want to go to the bank and come back. And, mm -hmm. and so those are the sort of things that I wanted to do anyway, and so that, that would be a continuity whether I'm in or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know, uh, also too, as part of the election, you know, uh, the youth have been having a say as it relates to, you know, Feeling left out generally. Um, what are you doing to ensure that the youth are engaged in the democratic process? Well, um, I've always been big on the youth. The fact that I am involved in sports means that I spend the last percentage of my day every day, and of course education, with youngsters. And so what I'd have to say is that I don't really spend a lot of time talking because I'm around them. I can speak to them, explain to them how the, the, the system works. Because what you... What you, you'll hear a lot, Kamal, coming from young people is, oh, I don't really have any interest in politics. I don't really want to be involved in it. You know, it's, 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 it's a dog eat dog kind of game and, and they, they never care about the people anyway. So I spend a lot of time, to be honest with you, educating them, explaining to them how the political system works, you know, what is the House of Assembly, you know, how does cabinet operate. I, I, I do these sort of things and I, I talk to them a lot, explain to them, so, so that they, as, a, as the young people, and of course, as you probably know, I, I have a sports show on a Saturday, and on that sports show, we spend a lot of time talking about uh, sports and how it's related to, to, to young people. Uh, uh, I also have a, a, a Wednesday show, another talk show, which is called The Morning Show, and I, I bring on on a regular basis people like the police um, who talk about their interaction with families. They have something that, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it now, but they have something that they call Family Fridays, which, which I've gotten involved in, where they're talking about uh, families, especially young families, learn how to deal with, with tough people in their, in their household. So what, what, what you find is that there's a, there's a young man, um, he's not getting along with his family, he becomes very disruptive. Um, and what happens is that if that's not fixed, that young man then turns to crime 
or it becomes problematic within the society. He starts to use drugs or what have you. Uh, uh, we talk a lot about these sort of things and get these things happening, mm-hmm. get people listening so they understand that they, there are other ways that, we can, that, that, that you can deal with it and, it, and they can be fixed. Mm-hmm. So these sort of things that I've been doing before that, I, that, that you know, I'll continue to do if not elected. Okay. Uh, and my next question now is, um, what are your views on the recently concluded Commission of Inquiry? Yeah, well, you know, uh, again, that is something that, how, 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 how can I put this? Really and truly, it is very unfortunate that we are the people, and I follow Turks and Caicos, by the way, and it is ironic that their premier and our premier ended up in the same fate. All right? But what we have to understand is that, as I was going to say, it is very unfortunate that we as a people have to be dictated to by our mother country. Okay, yes, we are, we are British, we are owned by the British, so to speak, all right? But they should, it should get to the point where they are telling us what to do, where they are controlling us, right? And so here's how I, here's how I see it for the average person listening. You are the parent and you have a child. That child misbehaves. Come out, what do you do with the child? Do you tell the child it's okay, continue to misbehave, or, or what do you do? Well, uh, you tell me. What, what's the best advice? Uh, what would you do with your child? I mean... You tell them to continue misbehaving? The, 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 the obvious decision would be to, to discipline the child. Correct. And that's what basically Britain has done. Now, what happens to the child is that he doesn't like the way he or she was disciplined. But my point is, if we didn't open that door and let them in, by doing things that we knew that we should not be doing, they wouldn't have had that opportunity to discipline us. They could not be talking about suspending the constitution or threatening to suspend the constitution. So these things have come about basically because of our actions. We created them, not them. Now, we are very upset, and rightly so, about the way that they are treating us. But we have to understand that they are the mother country. At the end of the day, it's the queen, now the king, Charles, who calls the shots. At the end of the day, at any day they can send seven or eight ships down here and decide that they're going to take control of all the ports, you know. So we can go to the United Nations and complain about it and fight them, surely. But that doesn't mean that they still can't do it, which is your question. Correct? So for us, we now have to begin to govern ourselves the correct way, do the right things. You know, if you want to be a, a, a member of the Honorable House, then you go out there, you work hard, and you become elected in the Honorable House. When you get in the Honorable House, you don't suddenly try to become a millionaire off of the people's money. You don't get involved with illegal um, trafficking of people. You don't get involved with illegal drug use. You don't get involved with all these other things that you know you're not supposed to be doing. You don't begin to make calls to, to cartels and all this other sort of stuff. You don't do that, right? We, you do the thing that you know you're supposed to do. You are now representing the people. Good governance refers to the people. Isn't that not so? Good governance is about the people. That is our job. We have a responsibility to the people. The people didn't put us in there to misuse and abuse their money. And so that's what we have to do. And that is what has happened. Rather than me sitting down here and becoming all philosophical about the Commission of Inquiry, the bottom line is that we now have to ensure that this never happens again. We talk about 1949, right? And then we talk about Noel Lloyd, right? And how Noel Lloyd had to fight to save Wickham Ski, all right? Well, the deal is, now we're back there, we have to fight again. Let us ensure that as a people, as Virgin Islanders, that that never happens again by you, the people who now have the authority and the right to go and give your ex to an individual, be very methodical and thoughtful as I was before I got involved as to who you're going to vote for and why you're going to go vote for that person and listen carefully to what that person is saying and their rationale and reasoning of why they want to run this country. And then before you make the X, think again of how they have been, uh, what has their track like, their track record been like in the last five or ten years. Look back at their track record, study their track record, and then listen to what they have to say, and then you make a decision. And if every single person does that, the BVI will be a better place to live in. 
and we'll be back to where we were 10, 15 years ago, which is where we should be. Okay. So my next question, the next elected uh, government will be tasked to continue with the implementation of the COI recommendations. How would you be of value to that effort? We'll be right back with more Just For The Record after this short break. One. Ugh. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health Is Well. We have Joel Turbo. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your, your footwork. Stephen Payne. That was a 9 out of 10. I know you got the service down pat. Steve Augustine. You did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps... And as you can see, it's actually... <laughs> You're feeling it. Impacting my lungs of boys. Taekwondo. Adam Morrows. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I uh, am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will bite. Be <laughs> <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy. shark research so today we are doing whale research with beyond the reef and wherever I go I take CCT with me because my life is unlimited we now return with more just for the record the next elected uh, government will be tasked to continue with the implementation of the COI recommendations. How would you be of value to that effort? Well, I think just like what I just said right now, because uh, and I know it's funny that people talk about Shireen, who is a flax child, who is in our group, and people say, so, you know, uh, Shireen's very strong and she's very, you know, she has this aggression about her. But the thing about Shireen is if Shireen believes in something, she's not afraid to say it, right? Here's the point that I'm making to you. My, st the, my stance is very simple. If you believe in something and you know it's right, you stand for what you believe in and ensure that whatever you're doing is the right thing. You get behind your party, you support your party, but as somebody said on the radio this morning, it cannot all be about just party, blue, red or green, right? It also has to more importantly be about the people who you're representing. So ensure that whatever decision that you're making, at the end of the day, fits the people and suits the people the best and not your individual family or your pocket. And that is how the approach that I intend to take as a member of the Honourable House, that whenever I go in there, whenever I speak or any decision I make relative to, to the Commissioner Inquiry or anything else, that I am thinking about the people, not just in the 4th District, because I'll fight for the people in the 4th. They're going to see a big difference in the 4th, I can promise you, based on the kind of person that I am, they will never ever have to say, oh, Paul and the ball, we haven't seen you since you've been elected. They're going to say, oh, we see you too much. I promise you, right? But outside of that, it's all about me fighting for the rights of the people and ensure that whatever we do, that we don't have this thing. I mean, you're, you're, you're building a wall and you put money to build a wall and you can't identify where the money went and the, somebody was paid to fix a piece of a wall and, and you had 40 people building one wall and, and, and you can't identify the money from the wall, right? The people who helped you, your, 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 your close allies and your, your staff are thrown uh, 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 in, in problems because you made a decision, because you weren't mind enough to stand up for your decision. Mm -hmm. I'm saying to you that that will never happen to me. Because if I say to you, Kamal, I needed to do so-and-so, You'll never have to worry about or watch your back about what I'm asking you to do. When I first went into work as a civil servant, the first thing my permanent secretary said to me, remember, Mr. Hewlett, that every decision that you make 
right? It's going to affect the people. And, you, and whatever decision that you make is not about what the minister is telling you, but it's about what is best for the territory. So be very careful in everything that you do. That was the first thing that I was told. And I live by that today. And so I understand when I'm at the other end, if I tell somebody to do something, you bet your bottom dollar that they don't have to look back over their, 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 their shoulder and they're not going to be thrown under the bus in one or two or three years' time or seven or eight years' time mm -hmm. because it wasn't done correctly or there were some questions asked about it. It will be clean, clear-cut, dotting my I's, crossing my T's. Mm -hmm. um, my next question is, I know you touched on tourism um, prior, more so sports tourism also as well. But what is your view on tourism as it relates to the future of the BVI? Right, so, you know, we, we, tourism is probably number two in our territory right now, right after offshore banking. Uh, but as you would have noticed, tourism has become stronger and stronger in the territory now. And, and I think it's something that we have to develop, like as with fishing, as, as with agriculture, these are things that we really have to start to look at and, and, and work on. And these are, these are places I'd be, I'd, happy, I'd be happy to go to. I don't need to know about agriculture to, to get agricultural work in this country, trust me, right? I just need to get people around me who, are, who understand it, right? Because it is clear cut to me. I mean, look at the fisheries place right now. Where is it? Do you understand? Look at, look at the market. Look at the new market that we have here. There are areas in the new market that is over there and people basically uh, can't afford, the little, the little man can't afford to pay what they're asking. There, there has to be an area where the general person can go, all right? But I mean, overall, my point is that whatever decision I make, whatever I'm doing, at the end of the day, I'm ensuring that the average man can afford to survive. The average man can go out there and he can make things happen. The average man can put a dollar into his pocket. That's what it's all about, Kamal. It's all about the, the, the regular person. You see, when you become a, a member of the Honorable House and you become very powerful, what happens is that power corrupts. Power corrupts. So if you not remain humble, you see, what we have to understand, I will try to explain to people that you can't take a dollar to the grave. Are you aware of that? You can't take a dollar to the grave. So no matter how much money that you generate when you're alive, after when the big boss calls you, it's all over. So it is vitally important for you and I to understand that we're in there for a reason, right? You're earning money. If you need to earn a couple million dollars, you're in the wrong profession. That's not this profession that we're in here. This profession here is about serving the people. You know, they said Lavity Stout, when he passed away, passed away literally a pauper, didn't have a lot of money. Because Lavity Stout was for the people. He's a man that came from humble backgrounds. They call him a country boy. He came to town, right? Fought off my father and Conrad, right? Because they're all in the same party. One day, see, Conrad didn't. It's like a big joke, right? But the right man got in. Because when, 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 when Laverty got in, Laverty went out there and began to fight for the people. And that's what I'm going to do. Go out there and fight for the people. What I've always been doing. I didn't just suddenly decide, oh, let me get up and become a politician. It's something I've thought about, guys, for years and years and years. I've fought with it. I've fought with it. But I knew, my, my instinct told me, come out. My instinct told me that at this point in time, that I had to, I had a responsibility to the people of the Virgin Islands. There are some people, Kamal, that you have to save from themselves. Listen to me good. There are some people that you have to save for themselves. They're jumping in, they want to be in this, and they want to do that, and they're going to go in, but they don't have the people at heart. We've got to save them from themselves. That's what's going on now. That's what's happening. So it's not about me coming in and trying to be, try to, you know, try to look pretty and try to talk. I, I'm not a guy, I'm not a fancy talker, I'm sure Kamal, you realize that. I just talk straight, because I'm, I, th this is not rehearsed, Kamal, I didn't know what he was going to ask me, although I tried to find out, right? And I just came straight to you guys, and I'm telling you people, m my focus is on human rights, it's on the average person on the street, for the average man to be able to feed his family, for the average man to be able to get some land and build a home, and leave something there for his children and his grandchildren. That is my focus. That is what I'm interested in. 
right? Not all these flamboyancy and trying to put $5 million in the account and go in there and, and get involved in all this illegal stuff. That doesn't interest me. And the people in the honorable house and everybody are going to soon realize that, no, 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 don't come to Hewlett because he's not interested in that. No, 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 not Hewlett. No, 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 don't, don't leave Hewlett alone. Mm-hmm. And uh, my penultimate question is, uh, I know you would have spoke uh, in depth about your passion for education, your passion for the youth, your passion for sports, etc. Um, do you presently believe that there's an issue uh, with bullying in schools? You know, there, that, 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 that's a very good question. There's, there, from, since time begun, that has always existed. When I was at school, there was bullying. From way back in the 1950s and 60s, there's always been a bully. So certainly there's always been bullying in schools, but it all comes on to the point that I was making. When we review the curriculum, we begin to put things and have things done differently. Let me give you an example. And I'm not knocking the school here, but I'm calling, I'm calling a spade a spade here. So don't get upset. School. I went to the... In the you're, initially, you've got to go in and they... Um, they tell me all the stuff that your son has to do and not, what he can and can't do. And they gave us photographs as to how my son needs to get dressed every single day. Otherwise, he won't be allowed through the gate. So, Kamal, unfortunately, if you came to the gate, you wouldn't get in. Because you have this nice, fancy hairstyle. But I would get in. Because I have a low cut and what have you. Nothing wrong with your hairstyle, but it's not acceptable for school. I promise you, if you go to the school and stand up tomorrow and have a look, there are kids with hairstyle exactly like yours going through the door. So how did that happen? The challenge is that although there are teachers who said that this has to be done, this is how they want it done, the system is failing. And that's the point I'm making you why I say it has to be revamped. The system is failing. So if... Ten of us as teachers say, we're not letting you in because your hair isn't fixed. That same child's father will call the minister or somebody else and the minister will say, you take your hands off of that child. You don't touch that. You leave that alone. And the child comes to school the next day. Things like that, I'm saying. I'm just giving an example. Happens. And so that's where bullying comes from. Where there are individual children that know that they can do certain things and get away with it. So... You know, Ray, Ray, Ray O'Neill and myself attended the same school and his brother Michael, St. Joe's Academy in Antigua. Bullying doesn't happen in that school. Never has and probably never will. It's a privately owned school by the Christian Brothers of Canada. And in that school, they have things they call demerit cards. They have specific rules. You can't go into class during a period and play around and mess about and walk around. You can't do that. When you come into class, you probably know, I don't know if the schools in Barbados, depending if you went to a private school, you see the same thing. You've got to go in there, you've got to sit down quietly, and you kind of, if bullying is going to happen, it happens outside of the school compounds. Because the rules are so strict within the schools, and every teacher is forced to adhere to those rules. In other words, us as teachers in the summer, when I taught in the school afterwards for a few years, had to go to specific training for one month. One month come out. We had to go and do training. So that, and, the, and the principal said, you don't have to come to the training, but if you don't come to the training, don't expect to see your name on the list for teaching in January, in September. Right? And so, yes, yeah, sure, there's bullying. Yes, so these things happening, but we now have to put systems in place whereby every single teacher feels comfortable with following these rules and now a parent doesn't get the impression that they can know, oh, there's no worry, man. I like to see him in that. There's nothing wrong with his. I can, I can fill up his hair or put locks in it. Or fill it no, be careful with the locks because there are some people who religiously wear locks. That's different, right? But when I say locks, there's some people who will have their hair pulled out in all different kinds of styles. When the school says, neat cut, low, all right? So there are exceptions to every rule, but those kids who are the exceptions are not troublemakers. The job makes are totally different. And so that's all part of putting the curriculum in place that fixes all those things. And that's where the bullying comes from. It's just like within a government. When there is a weakness within a government, the crime rate goes up in any territory in the world. 
When the government is strong and they stick to their words and they do the right thing, the crime rate goes down because now the young people have things that they can do, right? They, we've, they're engaged into what's happening. They're, they're more focused and so there's less crime. It's, this, it's one and the same. They're interrelated. Do you get the point I'm making? Yeah. Good. Uh, and finally, um, where do you see the BVI in 5, 10 or even 20 years? Well, I'll tell you where I hope you see the BVI, right back at the top. You know, a few years ago when you mentioned, um, you mentioned, you mentioned um, the, the Turks and Caters, the British Virgin Islands, and you mentioned um, a, a couple of places up in the UK, they were all ranked on the same, Guernsey, those kind of places. We were all ranked on the same level as far as, let's say, offshore banking. Right? Things in the BVI were good. Everybody was making money. The small businessman was happy. The population was over 40,000 and growing really fast. Right? That's where I need to see us getting back to. That point where everybody is comfortable, where the government is doing the right things, where crime is being controlled, where bullying in schools is being controlled, where the economy is stabilized, where tourism is happening. Where we can now say, okay, we have, a, we have an athletics track here in town, let's put another one over at Parakeeta Bay, let's have sports tourism over there, let's in, in, encourage and attract uh, athletes from all over the world who can come and get degrees in the BVI and at the same time become international track athletes. You know, athletes, many athletes go to the Jamaica to train all of, from all over the world and attend their universities. Why can't they come here? Why in five or ten years' time aren't they coming here? We have the same sun, sea, and sand that Jamaica has. We have the same potential. But now we have to put that all in place so that people now want to come to the BVI. We have to, put, we have, to have persons within the government who don't just claim to love the BVI. I'm sure you've heard it when you're home in your own house and your own, behind your closed doors. You go, ah. Oh. He don't really love the BVI, he just saying so. If he really loved the BVI, he wouldn't do this, he wouldn't do that, he wouldn't do the other. But, in, but here you wouldn't say it. But I'm saying it now. That there are many of you out there who claim to love the BVI. Oh, I'm indigenous, I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other. But look at their actions. Their actions are not telling me that they care about the BVI. And that hurts me because I care about the BVI. I have property here, I have houses here, I have children here, I have grandchildren here. I'm going to be buried six feet under here. Not in the Caymans, not in the UK, not in the United States. Here. For my Spanish friends, aquí. Here is where I'm finishing it all. And so therefore, here is what I care about, Kamal. And here is where I want to see people. Don't just tell me I love the BVI and then you do all kind of things to hurt our people. Show me by your actions, by your daily action, the thing that you're doing. Show me your love. When you meet a guy on the side road and you ask him for a dollar, give him the dollar. Help somebody behind you and pay for their groceries. Help other people. Don't just do it because they want to vote. Don't ask them get, you get in, turn your windows up and people can't see on the road. Well, we can't find you at any minute. Boy, what's going on now? Why well, don't I understand? Before the elections, I, he was by my house every day. Now I can't find the fellow. When they call his phone, he's too busy. That'll never happen to me. I promise you the people, that will never, ever in my lifetime happen to me. Period. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm telling you. I can give you my personal phone number now and tell you. You could call me anytime. People call me all the time. Late at night, early in the morning. Not just now, all the time. Because that is my personality. So I don't need to change who I am to be where I'm at now. Because this has always been me. And I've always been passionate about politics. But there's a time and place for everything. I'm not going to go into a sports show and discuss politics. I'm not going to do that. I'm discussing politics now, Kamal, because you and I now are seated here, and that's the reason why we're here today, to discuss politics. And if and when I'm put into the Honorable House, I will not just support the people of the 4th District very well, but I will speak out on behalf of the whole territory to ensure that we, the people of the Virgin Islands, are represented to the highest quality with integrity. Right? Because that's what the PVIM stands for. We say integrity matters. With transparency. Right? We will empower our people. We will give them hope. We will inspire our people. And most importantly, Kamal, we will 
have transparency and we are going to have accountability. We will be accountable for every action that we do. And if you know you cannot be accountable and you have no intentions of being accountable to the people, do not attempt to get into the honor of a house. If your actions in the past have shown that you cannot be accountable, I'm saying to you there who's listening to me right now, do not get in the race, step out. And I have a lot of faith in the people of this wonderful territory, that they will see through the people who are just trying to get in for name, who have no intention of being accountable. I know you know what I'm talking about as you listen to me today. You know who those people are. You will see through them and you will make the right decision because the BVI public have always done so. They'll make the right decision and they'll put the right people in power. Okay. Oh, great. Um, I want to thank you. That brings us to the end of our interview. I so quick. <laughs> I was just warming up, man. <laughs> I want to thank you, Mr. Hewlett, for your time and for joining Pardon us. Pardon the ball, man. We've been yeah. with friends now, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for your time and joining us here on Just For The Record. I really appreciate your time. Listen, I want to thank you. I want to thank the people of the Virgin Islands. Looking forward, I can't wait for elections. I'm so fired up. In the night, I don't even sleep. I'm up thinking about the people, things I can do. So I'm, I'm fired up. Come on, appreciate the time with you. Really enjoyed it. Enjoy talking to the people of our wonderful British Virgin Islands and looking forward to doing this again pretty soon. Okay, thank you so much. Well, viewers, uh, that brings to the end of another episode. Hope you enjoyed the content from today's episode. Until next time, bye-bye. One. Uh. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turnbull. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your footwork. Stephen Payne. That was a 9 out of 10. I know you got the service down pat. Steve Augustine. He did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps. And as you can see, it's actually <laughs> impacted me. Lonzo Boynes. Taekwondo. Adam Morrells. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I uh, am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will bite. Everything it <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy.